G'day IB psychologists. In this video for stress for health psychology, we're going to look at appraisal. So we're looking at cognitive explanations of stress. Why do we get stressed? Let's look inside the mind and here we're going to look at appraisals. So what we want to answer here are how and why do appraisals influence stress? Really we're trying to explain why people get stressed out using this cognitive uh, explanation called appraisal. So what is an appraisal? The, the fancy definition is, and there's loads of different definitions out there, but the process of categorizing an encounter and its various facets with respect to its significance for well-being. Okay, what does that mean? That has to cover a range of things, hence it's abstract. It's really thinking about the things that stress you out. It's an assessment, an appraisal. Think, you know, if you go have a house appraisal, it means someone's going to see what is this worth, what's it like. If you have an appraisal at your job, someone's doing an assessment, an evaluation. So an appraisal for us, it's an assessment of how stressful something is, right? Do I think this is stressful? Um, yeah. So for example, uh, we're going to look at an example about stress. Do you think stress itself, how you appraise actual stress, is it harmful or beneficial and that can affect your health? Also think about your exams. Do you get stressed out by exams or not? What's your appraisal of exams. Okay, so first of all, one study that shows how appraisals can influence stress uh, is this one by Fisher et al. Very basic. They wanted to see how our beliefs about stress, how our appraisals would influence physical symptoms of health. And so this was uh, a study done on German university students and they used some questionnaires to gather uh, their um, chronic stress and also their beliefs about stress. Basically, did they think stress was beneficial helpful or was it harmful? And they gathered their data at two times, once in the beginning of the semester, very low stress, and then you know what it's like come the end of the semester, all your assessments, all your assignments are due at the same time they gather their data again then. And so they wanted to correlate the uh, symptoms of stress and these beliefs over these two time periods. And so what they found was that the students who believed stress was bad for them had more physical symptoms of stress, right? So more somatic symptoms during that later exam period. That is a very simple piece of evidence that shows how we appraise stress, whether or not we think it's good for us or not, can influence our physical health. Um, and also the appraisals, actually, when they did the analyses of the data, they found that the appraisals increased our stress and that's what caused the symptoms. All right, and so we see here. So if you uh, the, in the students who believe stress was bad for them, they had high that led to higher levels of stress which led to more physical symptoms very basic explanation here that's linking um, appraisals with our health now Lazarus and Folkman are probably the most influential researchers in stress uh, they developed a theory in the 1980s the transactional model of stress and coping and in this model they describe two specific types of appraisals and so stress occurs or not, depending on your appraisals along these lines. So first of all, we have primary appraisal and secondary appraisal. The names of these is pretty easy to remember. The explanation is a little bit trickier. That's not so bad. So these are types of appraisals of particular stresses. All right, so let's look at primary appraisal first. So there are five different types of primary appraisals you might make. Irrelevant, harmless, harmful, threatening, or challenging. So of course, let's take, for example, college apps. Well, if you're not applying for college, right, so your counselor comes into the classroom and say, okay, we've got your college application forms, here they are. If you're not ready to apply, then you're probably not gonna be stressed out by that because it's not relevant for you right now, okay? Um, if it's harmless, right, there's no, in, there's, this particular college app process isn't have any harm or negative impact for you in the long term, right, then you're like, it's fine. But so then if it's A or B, stress won't happen. But if there's a chance that a stressor could cause you harm, or if it's threatening, which means there's a potential to cause harm, or if it's challenging, meaning it's relevant to you, but there's a potential here for gain, that's the difference between a threat appraisal and a, a challenge appraisal in this particular model, uh, then one of those three things, C, D, or E, it's going to cause stress, right? So that's the primary appraisal process. So if you're struggling to understand this, perhaps try applying it to a couple of other scenarios. Again, I like to use the IB exams. That's a good one, and we might talk about that later in this video. Now, that's the primary appraisal. Secondary appraisal, can you cope with the stressor? Do you have enough resources? So resources could be things like time, support, money, even energy, 
right? If, if you feel like you can cope, then you won't uh, experience stress, okay? So if something's threatening, challenging, harmful, uh, and you feel like you don't have the resources to cope, that's when you'll feel stress. Uh, if not, then that's when you won't have stress, right? I've got the resources to cope, and this doesn't really relate to me. Okay, so hopefully we can see here, this is the appraisal theory of stress. Um, I recommend trying to diagram this for you to try to process it and put it in your own words and your own understanding. It might help you understand it a little bit better. Um, but again, let's apply this to the exams, right? If you think they're irrelevant or harmless, uh, and or you have enough resources. You you don't get stressed out by an easy quiz, right? Like, oh, tomorrow we've got a quiz on one word. You have to define this term. All right, you've got the resources to cope with that. You've got the time, uh, you've got the energy, you've got the knowledge, the brain power to solve that. But why IB exams become so stressful? Well, suddenly there's a lot of demands placed on you, a lot of content, a lot of, uh, and there's a lot of importance, right? You might be thinking these are potentially threatening if I fail, what are the, or they could be harmful if I fail, what are the consequences? And I'm not sure I'm going to, going to be able to handle them, right? That's when stress uh, can occur. Now, how do you cope with all that? We're going to get to that in future lessons. Okay, so if you think there's a potential for gain, loss, or harm, right, in your primary appraisal, and you don't have the resources to cope based on your secondary appraisal, then your exams are going to be stressful. So let's look at one classic study that investigated this by Lazarus. So what's happening in this image? This is uh, an image from Wikipedia of a, um, a I don't know how else to describe it, except for uh, genital mutilation of young boys' penises in which they um, use Stone Age tools for this ritual. Uh, and now in the study, they watched a video of this ceremony being performed. Um, and what they did, they manipulated the study. If you can imagine, right, if you're a young man watching this or a young woman, uh, it would be quite disturbing. But they manipulated appraisals by having four different voiceover narratives. So they had the intellectualization, which um, uh, highlighted the certain aspects, uh, you know, make it sound like an anthropology. We're looking at this from just a neutral uh, observer, academic standpoint. Denial uh, downplayed the trauma associated in the boys and the harm that it was doing. Um, we're opposite to the trauma condition, which uh, emphasized the danger and the um, and all the horrible elements of the study. And the control just watched it silent without any narration. Okay, so this was designed, same video image, right, but different information they were getting designed to affect how they were praising the um, video. And we can see here from the results from the original study, the trauma condition had much higher stress response. This was uh, measured through um, skin conductivity. So when we're stressed, our skin becomes a better conductor of electricity. And so this is how they used, uh, measured their stress response in this study. So we can see the other three pretty similar, but the trauma condition had um, much higher stress response. Okay. Now, why? Um, because this it enhanced the appraisals of threat, right? And to quote from the original study, right? A participant in the threat condition identifies himself, these were male subjects back in 1963, identifies himself with the actors in the film as though he were one of them and can thus be threatened by what has happened to them. Now, what's interesting here is they use the, f I haven't been able to track down the original footage and they use the, the word actors here. It makes me wonder, I wonder if this, were they really actors performing this or was it a real uh, film? I think it would have been a real film, um, the, just the terminology. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. Uh, so the information provided in the other narratives reduces the threatening aspects, right? So there's not that uh, primary appraisal of threat. So here it's more appraised as being directly relevant and harmful to the person watching it because they can put themselves in that situation. So a study that shows the link between appraisals and a threat appraisal and an increased stress response. Okay. And this is where, um, and perhaps why from all this research from Lazarus and Folkman and their original very popular model, the transactional model of stress and coping, why their definition of stress has become the most uh, commonly used. So they define stress as a relationship between the person and the environment that is appraised as personally significant and as taxing or exceeding resources for coping. Right, so to put that into uh, easier terminology like we talked about in the previous video, this is you come across a situation which is relevant to you, threatening, challenging, harmful, uh, and you don't have the resources to cope. Taxing here is suggesting like, okay, it's, it's really demanding, right? Or 
like so it's at your limit of being able to cope or you don't have the resources to cope so we can see how appraisals can explain uh, stress simply i mean the primary and secondary appraisals are embedded in this very definition of stress now i like to add to this definition the physiological stress response i really don't think we can talk about stress without talking about our physiological fight or flight so we can add here um uh, taxing or exceeding resources for coping which produces a physiological stress response i think it makes it a complete definition all right that's it for appraisals uh two key studies there with lazarus and fisher and what our appraisals are primary secondary appraisals hopefully you can use that to explain why uh appraisals influence stress now if that was a little confusing and heavy and it is quite tricky don't worry coming up in the unit and in future videos we're looking at locus of control that's a far simpler but just as meaningful and relevant cognitive explanation for stress locus of control so you can have the choice between uh, if you're studying for the ib exams uh, appraisals or locus of control reminder all the resources if you don't already have access to them there's links in the description to example essays flashcards audiobook versions so you can listen to more of my wonderful voice i'm joking i bet it is me recording it uh, or you could get these all in the bundle if you're a student and this looks interesting and you aren't already studying this then feel free to send it to your teacher and suggest uh, we have the blog always being updated along with this youtube channel so thank you very much i hope that was helpful working really hard on talking slowly um, and coming up next we're going to look at reappraisals.